Saturday, January 13, 2024. What I did, what I have done till now, I have removed the bottom end here, the bottom section, all right? Front, the water pump is out. This, this is supposed to be an oil pump, but since it's a dry sump and has the pump here, this is just a cover, all right? The gear here inside, the crankshaft rear seal, all right? Now, at this point, before I pull out, no, I can put out the, pull out the pistons actually. Yeah, I need to mark the pistons and then take it out. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, right? Yeah, and then to make it upside down, what's my point? I don't want to split the block here and then get measurements from the cylinder. Ideal is going to be to have also a torque plate to be torqued down the block, like as it is right now, put also the torque plate and then get the values from each cylinder, get the measurement. But it's okay, it's fine, it's fine. Then we see here, yeah, all right, fine. All right, and that's what I'm gonna do now. I checked yesterday the cooling jets to see that uh, they don't interfere, and it's beautiful. It's not, it has enough clearance between the jet and the piston or the connecting rod. It's not touching anywhere, it's fine. All right, let's take out the pistons and then get a measurement from the cylinders, from each cylinder, to write down on a paper. On a paper. Yep, that's the target. We're okay there, yeah, we're okay there. Need to get another, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Need a marker to write the pistons. Yeah, and move on. Number one piston out. I have one comment here. For an engine that it never ran, that's what they told me, that it never ran this engine, all right? If you have already lines on the skirt, it's not ideal if you're asking me. Second thing, the top piston ring, it has assembly grease, it doesn't move freely. The second one is dry, it does have nothing. And the oil control ring, it is what it is. Then, even the connector bearings, they have some lines. Yeah, okay. All right. Even the top one has some lines. One second, let me get the rug to wipe it. Yeah, okay, all right. Okay. Fine, fine. All this need to be washed, obviously. I cannot use it like that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put it back together like this. That's, that's the point. All these things, whatever you see, need to be washed. Let's continue. First, second out, I'm going to the number three, and you see this inside. And this, I don't know what in hell is that, and how this happened, to be honest, how they did it, <laughs> I have no clue. Yep. <laughs> you don't want this kind of stuff. Moving on. And like I said, whatever I see and I don't like it, I'm putting on the video. These connecting notes all out. Everything is in order. And I have right here number one, number two, number three, four, five, and six. All right. I have to clean, I have to wash it to remove all the oil to come completely dry 
and then to inspect. And I have to write also the connecting rod number one and bearings and the bolts to be always on the same position. Why is that? There is a balancing numbers here and on the crankshaft there is, I'll going to show you later, I'll going to show you later. Yesterday I tried to check the actual movement of the crankshaft just by eye, just to see how much playing from the back, all right? And I said, okay, it has assembly grease, assembly oil. It might, I might not be able to see by eye, all right? So today I put the digital indicator here that's measuring a thousand of a, of a millimeter, okay? And what I'm doing, I'm putting the screwdriver here and I'm pushing the cracks up front. And I see that while I'm holding some tension front, it goes to 8,000 millimeter, not 800, 8,000 millimeter, okay? If I release, let me release it. I'm just forcing it front, ah, I reach 100 millimeter. All right, I'm removing, and it goes down to 9,000 millimeter. Now, if I push it backwards, it goes minus 3,000 millimeter, and if I release the screwdriver, it goes to positive 1,000 millimeter. Question mark on the machining on the block for the thrust washers, or question mark for the thrust washers itself. We're gonna find out later on. Let's move on. Let me move one second from here the tool, and I wanna show you the crank. All right, what I was saying earlier, these things, this one, this one here, and here. These things, it's somebody removed material from this point for a balancing. I know, never mind. Then, there is assembly oil. All right, and it's not the assembly oil that I'm using. And this is what I'm doing, it doesn't mean anything. Literally, it doesn't mean anything. It's just, I can feel the crank. Here it comes loose. Here it's much freely to spin it. And then there is one point that's stuck. There. If you see this counterweight, where it's, where it's located, you see that here it's a little bit more tight. Again, it has assembly grease on it. And yeah, okay. I'm not using this assembly grease, to be honest. Then we're gonna come one point, then we're gonna come free. Ah, here. And then again. There is only a couple of degrees that comes free the crankshaft. And then again. It's not. We're gonna see. We're gonna open it. Let's make it upside up to see the cylinders. So, once again, because of this here, and because of the numbers for balancing on the pistons, that's why I'm keeping it in order. All right, because I don't have a machine, I don't have the tool to balance the crankshaft. Let's make it upside up to see the cylinders. Now, I have put it at 86 millimeters, I zero it at 86 millimeters, and if you watch every cylinder, it's greater by four to 500 millimeter. There is a little bit run out, but once again, I don't have a torque plate. So all of them, you see the same thing, four to 500 millimeter greater than 86. Yeah, it's not, it depends, uh, this on the number six, it's 300. Yeah, where I'm pointing. It's 300 at this point. 
here it's 400 yep all right it depends what temperatures you are expecting inside of the cylinder on the combustion chamber what I mean by that, how much you're gonna expand the piston, what type of piston you have, how much you're gonna expand, what fuel you're gonna use. It, you can go greater in some applications, all right? It's not a daily use engine by far. <laughs> we have a small dent here, yeah, all right. So this, you don't want to have nothing here, yeah. So I don't see any crazy run out. I check it at the bottom dead center, middle and top dead center, near the top dead center, approximately here, all the cylinders. All they are four, five hundred millimeter greater than 86. That means 86.04 or 0 0.05. There is a run out by hundred of millimeter. And this, you might, when you put the torque plate, it might be a little bit better because you, you are accepting 100 millimeter run out, like I've said. Now, removing the crank, removing the crank, what it takes, first the M6 here, these two M6, then there are some other bolts here that's from down, I'm, I'm gonna show you, the last will gonna be the main, that's the point, that's the thing. Okay, like I said, first the two M6 Allen here, then 13, 13, M8 actually here and then the mains with this order on the cooling sets yeah all right okay all right all right all right all right let's take it out I'm curious to get some measurements of the crank to see the condition yeah all right moving on I just remove the two allen bolts here okay and then i realize that there is an attachment point on the block at this point this it came without a bolt that this i'm gonna fix properly when i finish when i when i'm gonna remove the block from the stand all right so what need to be done here need to get a table need to get a rubber mat to so don't hurt any surface need to slide it under Transfer the block on the table and then continue opening it. All right, let's make it a bit more down. Yep, that's the plan. Now, engine with adapter on the table, on a rubber mat, down there, don't hit the surface. Like I said, engine stand, it's been separated. Now, one free advice, not advice, what I'm doing, all right, what I'm doing. I'm putting this piece here to be centered with the crankshaft and I'm putting all four brackets. I'm not keeping any bracket without support, all right? So, that, that, but that's what I'm doing, all right? Let's move on. When, when I'm gonna uh, put back again, I'm gonna make sure to put all the brackets to be nice, to don't have any headache. And always, between the adapter and the block, it's a good thing to put one washer to don't hurt the block, to don't have any sign. But like I said, that's me, all right? It's not a rule, and this is what I'm doing. Let's continue. And again, for the engine stand, try to get advantage of all the threads that it has inside. Try to be, let us say, one, two millimeters before it stops, before it finishes the threads get as much as possible engagement for the bolt that's what i'm talking about especially when you can you can adjust it with the washers okay i mean this is one centimeter probably same thing here and then this one it's a bit more this is almost two centimeters 20 millimeters that goes inside so once again an advice friendly advice opinion all right try to get as much as possible, all the threads that has the block. Yeah, let's move on. Let me take out the stand from here, place the, the table correct, and continue. Before I remove the crankshaft, <coughs> I wanna see the 
thrust washer. This is the front lower thrust washer, and this is the rear one. Let me take it out. Just a second. Once again, the engine it never runs. Eh? And you can see, <laughs> you can see lines on the thrust washer. It's not good to have a metal to metal contact, by the way. And there you have metal to metal contact. All right, let me write it and continue. I'm gonna write the lower the thrust washers, the upper, like any other time, and keep it in order. We're gonna see that later. Crankshaft out. Some of the main bearings they stuck on the crankshaft, and I leave it there. It's here. All right. Now, thrust washers. Thrust washers. We have. This is front lower, front lower, front upper. Rear lower and rear upper, all right? This, I'm gonna say that for a used thrust washer, it's, it looks decent. For a brand new, mm, nope. This marks, it didn't happen, it didn't happen by a wear or something. This, somebody hit the thrust washers. You see the mark there, you see the mark there. Same thing on this one. And there is also here some scratches. And then you see metal to metal contact. Also here up. Yep. That's about the thrust washers. Let's move on. Cranks of main bearings. Upper, lower, one till seven, okay. Now we're gonna make it upside up in order again to see how the, how it looks like. And that's how it looks like facing up. One to seven, upper, lower, okay. Now, keep in mind one thing. The guy who built the engine, he spin, let us say, the crankshaft 10 times. I'm gonna say 20 times by hand, all right? Because keep in mind, it never ran this engine. So you spin it 20 times by hand. Then when it came the time to set up the timing for the cam, for the cam, cam of gear, okay? He did another 10 times example. That it's too much, I know, I'm just saying, 30 times. I spin it also yesterday another 20 times. So that means we spin 50 times the crankshaft all right, by hand, without oil pressure, fine. And before it was, you see that it's full of assembly grease actually. I just wipe it to get some measurements, all right? What's my point? It's not acceptable to have a polishing bearing and only on this point on a new bearings. The, the bearings, it's supposed to be it's supposed to, no, it's supposed to be like this, because also this has a policing, all of them have policing, yeah, but the, the number seven. This has supposed to be when it's new. These lines, <clears throat> it's when they measure it to see the clearance, to see, to, to measure the diameter, because you're putting it on the block, you're putting it, you're logging down, you're tightening, and then you get the, your measurements. This is, this is okay, this is how it's supposed to be. This is how I'm expecting to see all of the all of the bearings in an engine that it never ran. It's just cranked 50 times by hand, all right, with a full assembly grease. So that's what I'm expecting. The, this is okay, and the, we are talking about an upper bearing, all right? An upper bearing to have a policing mark there, it, it, it makes no sense to me. In, it never ran, the engine, once again. You, have, you see the lip there? It's supposed to don't be like this sign here. 
Then you see here, same story here. Yeah, by the way, we are talking about uh, 20 millimeters width bearings. Eh? This is 23, but this is 20 millimeters, the width. So some people, they're saying out there, ah, you know what, I make the clearance 600 millimeter or 500 millimeter. They never ask how much the width, how much the journal diameter. They're just throwing numbers randomly, like it was a diesel. The, the diesel bearings, uh, just want to remind you, it's almost 40 millimeters width. It depends which diesel you're talking about. But if you go to the old school, because some people, they, they get it from, from diesel engines that they have a, that, that, that width bearing, and they're saying, ah, yeah, you know, make it five, 600 millimeter. And the engine will never gonna run more than, it will never gonna rev more than 30,000 RPMs, and it can have plenty of oil pressure. It's, it's not a diesel engine, it's 20 millimeter width. Yes, you can be more tight on a billet block because of the expansion, yes, but not to be tight to a point that you're gonna have metal to metal contact because this one, to eat this material from the cell of the, the bearing cell here, this involving to have a contact, the crankshaft journal with the actual bearing. Let's continue with the lower one. Lower one, number one, okay. Number two, okay. Three, a slightly polished mark. Again, it's supposed to don't have nothing for not right. Fifth, this is how it's supposed to be. The, the number five, this is how you're getting when it's brand new, the bearing cell. And like I said, these lines is because when you're measuring it, you just, this on the surface, it's not hurting the bearing. This is just to, what I was doing before, I was getting two sets of bearings exactly the same brand, same everything. One I had it for measurements, and then I was putting the new one, the brand new, and then I was using the plastic aids to ver verify my measurements. So the bearings that I had with the small lines, I was not using it, but it is what it is. Yeah, so you have a polished mark there, all the way around is fine. And then on the seven, you have also that. Crankshaft, it's all over the place. The journals, it's all over the place. It's not, okay, 61.97 millimeters, 61.96. Okay, yeah. If you get a micrometer here and you try to insert it inside, you see in some of them it's passing freely, in some of them it comes nice and tight. Not tight, how it's supposed to be to get a measurement. I don't remember if I, if I touch it as an example. If I go here, this one, I think it's this one, this two, the number four. Yeah, on, on the number four as an example, I'm passing it in and out freely. I, I can make even this movement. I can tilt it left and right. On the number three, So the second, the number three, it's nice and tight. It's actually it's a little bit more tight that, than to get a measurement. All right, it's for an aftermarket crank, you're expecting, I don't know if they touch it. No, don't say bullshit tassels, right? Yeah, don't say BS. I don't know if they touch the journals, to be honest. <clears throat> now, Now, I need to put it back, I need to get also a measurement here to see the, the width for the thrust washers. I want to get also a measurement from here to see the width and then when I put it together, because I have to put this back again on the block, torque it down and then get some measurements. Just to see if it's okay. The you can tell me it's aluminum and you're at the room temperature. Yes, you're right. Yeah, but you cannot be all over the place. And like I said, yes, you can be. Guess which other block? It's aluminium. It's the M57, example. Or let us say, get the M275, the V12. All right. You cannot be that tight that 
it's touching, it's, you start polishing a bearing. That, that's my point. I hope that makes sense. All right. We're going to see what we're going to do. Now, from now on, from now on, it's all about measurements. Hey. Stripping it off completely, washing it. The, here, you don't, it's not good to see marks like that. All right. And you just tap it with a rubber hammer, with a mallet, and it's fine. You don't want to see somebody put a screwdriver probably here and here and then here how somebody file it or just scratch it. Yeah. The same thing here. Yeah, same thing also here. Yeah, just if you tap it with a mallet, with a rubber hammer, slowly, it's gonna pop out. Because after all, you know, it has a seal here. It's a rubber seal, it's not a sealant. It has a sealant only in four spots, no, not, e not even, not even. It might be the pins, but if you tap it a little bit, it's gonna come out. <coughs> That's it for now. Let's see how it's gonna end up. Yeah. Okay, all right, never mind. I need to talk also to the owner because I asked him for the torque specs for the studs that has done for the crankshaft, for the single head studs some specs here and there, if he has also the paper for the crankshaft. Uh, still till now, I don't know, they, they're gonna spray nitrous, uh, nose, they're gonna be, uh, what kind of fuel they're gonna use, I don't have a clue, honestly. What's the expectations? It will gonna be this one, uh, one season run only, or it gonna be in a long terms? Because it depends the application. It depends what you are. It, it, it's different for daily use. Different for drag application, dragster. Okay. It depends. It might be a time attack, as an example, because of the dry sum. Example, I'm saying that you are on the in the race track and you are turning left and right. You don't want to cause a fuel starvation. Scenario. All right. That's it. Or it might be a drift car. I don't know. I don't think so. I doubt, but just saying. Uh, <laughs> now, for any news, I'm going to make another video. That's it for now. Need to clean and measure to see what's going on. Also, the cooling cells, I have to take it out carefully. Silicon, this, this silicon, it's like it's coming like a concrete. I don't know what kind of silicon is that, sealant? Maybe it's for the windows, I don't know, for the windshield. Yeah. I'm not using this kind of cylinder, I'm not using even that much. And I cannot keep it like that because I don't know if it fell inside, if it passed inside. Yeah. I have to open it with one way or the other. That's it for now. Over and out. Thank you. By the way, don't forget it. I receive also the damper pulley. Right? It's not the time now, the damper pulley. The damper pulley. Yeah. Uh, regarding the cooling system, there are some ways that you can connect it. It depends the application, like I said. All right. And anything else? No, nothing else. Yeah, let's put together the clips. By the way, yesterday I was thinking that it was 10 minutes. It turned up to be half hour, I think. Let's see today. How long is going to be this video? Hey. By the way, all this is rough measurements, okay? I need to clean it, wash it, to don't have oil, you don't have assembly grease on it, it would be perfect, and then I'll get the correct measurements. This is just some rough measurements that arise on the table. Fine. Yeah. Over and out. Ha by the way, have a nice weekend. Saturday today, yeah? Yay. Lovely.